my name's Dominic O'Brien, and I'm the Managing Director of Experienced Energy Solutions. And this is my colleague, Craig Watson, Operations Director. And we're a Midlands-based energy consultancy, which you might tell from my Brummie accent. Um, today, we're here to talk to you about some of the challenges we're seeing our customers facing within supply chains to become net zero. I'm going to give you some examples of, of the pressure that some of our customers and what we're seeing in the market in terms of them getting on the road to net zero. So I'm going to hand over to Craig to present the first couple of slides, and then I'll talk you through some examples. Thank you, Dominic. So first and foremost, the question we want to pose to the audience or the question we've asked a lot of our customers, even friends, family, business owners, is do you want to lose your biggest customer? Now, universally, as you'd expect, the answer to that question is no. Um, most people work very hard to obtain their customers. They go through a lot of long tender processes. They present, they pitch, they win business. The last thing you want to do is lose that for reasons that you're not aware of or that are outside of your control. And historically, when we did this research, we asked business owners, what are the biggest risks to losing your customers? And some of the answers that they came up with was things like competitors. We're not the only business that offers the solution, the service, the product that we offer. Competitors are always out there to try and win new business, which means win our clients. They put together marketing campaigns. They try and put budgets towards winning new business. And that's a risk that most business owners will face. Losing key members of staff, people you've trained, you've invested time into understanding your business, your culture, Losing them to a competitor could mean that they take relationships and customers with them. And failure to innovate, not thinking forward, not looking at what the market could become in the next few years, standing still. Um, I used an example earlier today, actually, when I was speaking to somebody about Nokia phones and how we all love playing Snake. And, and you know, that was quite um, adventurous when we were young. The iPhone came in. We've used iPhones for years, but we don't actually use it for a phone. We use it primarily for so many different reasons now. And that innovation has led to them being one of the biggest, Apple being one of the biggest companies and Nokia no longer in that industry. But one risk that business owners didn't typically say was net zero. Net zero at the minute isn't at the forefront of people's mind. And we feel that that potentially could be the biggest risk out there because we're starting to see supply chains ask questions of their customers now. What are you doing for sustainability, CSR? What are you doing to become net zero? And for us, obviously, there are some of the risks that we see. What are the impacts of, of losing your biggest customer? So internally, there's a lot of um, issues that will come out of losing your biggest customer. You lose sales. Sales equals revenue. Revenue is needed to invest. If you lose some of your biggest customers, you've got to work hard to gain that back. A negative perception can be created. If you're losing customers for a particular reason and you're in an industry where that's known to competitors, it's known in the market, customers may feel that you know, there's a risk that they shouldn't be staying with you. They should be looking elsewhere if other businesses are doing it. Staff engagement, panic sets in. Why are we losing our biggest customers? What's that going to mean to the FTE? Could redundancies happen? Um, and then lastly, internal focus. Poor performance, why have we lost customers? Rather than innovating and growing and thinking forwardly, people start to look sometimes at why we're going the wrong way, and that slows businesses down. From an external perspective, there's a lot of things, again, mentioned it already, but negative perception. Competitors look to gain, they look to target your customers because they can see you're losing business for particular reasons. And what we've identified is that there's eight supply chains that equate to 50% of the global emissions within the world. They consider supply chains such as food, construction, fashion, electronics, automotive, professional services, fast-moving consumer goods, and freight. And what we believe is that if we can help connect supply chains, we can tackle net zero collectively, and they'll get multiple benefits. One, it'll be easier for them to not just get through scope one and scope two, but also look at scope three, where you do need to know whether you're inheriting um, products or services that have been offset already. It'll have a cost impact, we believe, to businesses that'll be easier to spread amongst the supply chain rather than to tackle individually. And we also believe that employees will get more engaged with the company. They'll get more engaged with stakeholders, which adds value for career, career development because you're talking to 
to multiple people within your industry. So 